Thanks for checking out Stoppage Time. We do this five days a week live, Monday to Friday, on our IG account for the first half podcast. We talk to boys and girls dealing with what we're all dealing with right now, a little bit of uncertainty and not being able to go out much in the world. We're going to show off some of our best football memorabilia and favorite jerseys. We're also going to talk about how we're keeping mentally sane, physically active, and what we miss most from the outside world. Uh, So listen, one of the things on Stoppage Time we love to do is everybody that allows us into their personal space, we ask them to show us a little something football rise uh, that you might have around, a scarf, a jersey, something. Uh, You know, I mean, you are uh, a goal uh, foundation captain. You've been around. You've been doing a lot of stuff. I see you all over the place. Uh, You're around all sport. I know hockey's like the number one, but I mean, you're definitely a sports guy, let's be honest. Uh, So do you have something you could show uh, the people that that have joined in and then get to see you in your home and see a little personal side of your football life. Can I do a quick like show and tell? Cause I got a few things yes, here that I, that I pulled out. Yeah. Um, this, you'll, re- you'll remember this. This is like one of the most coveted items. When you uh, attend like a, like a goal Montreal event and you pull up with one of these jackets. Ooh, he, old he, school. Yeah, you're right. You're right. That's he, old school. And he will, and he will attest to that. What, what year was this made? Cause no one has uh, this. No, I think that's like uh, nine or ten. Um, I got I got my jersey like, here that I always quite enjoy. Very uh, well done. Very, very nice. Very nice. So I have, um, you know, you, you need to rock the uh, the impact scarf when you go to a game. You know. Yeah, totally right. Totally right. Montreal, and then. Very nice. So. As you know, I, I enjoy soccer, football. Um, I'm not yeah. a fantastic player, as you know, right? And so the first, few times, the first few times that I started playing, I would just play with, like, normal shoes. And then at one point, I don't know if it was you, but someone said, like, Pat, you need, like, cleats. You can't just you play with like, normal like shoes. <laughs> and then I was like, well, crap, I don't have cleats. And so I sent out a, uh, a, a fa- Facebook message, like, who's got cleats? that I can borrow. And uh, right. the cleats that I've been wearing every time that I play are these guys here. Yeah, and, very nice. Um, you know how we're always confused between soccer and football? Well, now more than ever, because these were uh, Etienne Boulay's cleats from uh, from when he played for the Alouettes. And he obviously- But did he, he play, he, he played in those boots? I mean, that's those what he told me. Those are, that's amazing. Cause those are, oh wow, that's, that's insane. So, uh, he was, I, I retired when he gave me these. And so he's like, oh, yeah, I got, you know, m- more than a few pairs. You can just have these. And I'm like, you sure? He's like, yeah. And so every cool. time I claim these, I feel like I've got a little, um, it's, it's kind of like having, having an extra life when you're playing a video game, you know? I think that totally. these little always, power up. Yeah, these give me just a bit more booze than I probably should have. Um, and thanks to Tim, because every time I wear these, I think of him, and I think of the uh, the generous gesture. Because these can't be that cheap, right? Nice. These are like no, no. And those like, are those are those are pro quality, right? That's some nice. Uh, that's a nice boot. Yeah. Plus, you now got such a great story with it, right? So yeah, do you have something you'd like to, or some things you'd like to show us? Uh, sure. Yeah, I've got some stuff that uh, I'm a soccer fan. I don't have the. Uh, I don't think the full devotion of some soccer fans that every morning, sometimes in North America, watching the European games, but yeah. they can every Saturday or Sunday, whenever it is. But yeah. uh, I've been to a lot of games, fortunately, in my travels. And uh, that's a, that's my first friend. ever game was uh, was in Florence, and it was Man. in 2001. And I bought a scarf. So I brought my AC, ACF Fiorentina scarf out here. Amazing. And uh, this was a game in 2001, as I mentioned. And they played uh, Atalanta Bergamo. Amazing. And uh, I believe it was a 2-1 final, and Fiorentino won it. And I was sitting way up. And, you know, we didn't know which stands to sit in. You know, we got the visitor stands. We were with the, the home team, though. You know, the purple everywhere. And the, a major fight broke out, too. And that was my first In ever. the stands. Like, I saw a dude jump over several rows of chairs and, like, kick some other dude. It was scary as hell. Yeah. And it was the, the I was like, this is nuts. And I was with a buddy who was a, a really fr- good friend of mine from South America who had seen these kind of things before. So before, yeah. we knew how to react and you, security got the people out and, and we stayed for the rest of the game. <laughs> it was a lot of, it was a lot of the North Americans. Oh yeah. It wasn't game. at the end of the game. It was just in the middle of the match. In the middle of the match. It was pretty scary. Crazy. Um, the, the scarf you bought in the street, like at one of those vendors, like at one of those, yeah. like, yes, one of the dudes even, as, even you're, cool as you're walking into the arena, or yeah, as you're walking into the stadium. That's the best merch. 
Cool. And uh, so it was a pretty wild game, uh, but it didn't scare me off because I went to many more games uh, over the course of my life. Uh, I was so lucky I got to go see Boca Juniors uh, wow. in their home, story, in home stadium in uh, Buenos Aires, in La Boca. Yeah. Uh, I think it's called La Bombanera. And yeah. uh, I remember when they score, people jump up and down, you know, and so like they, they did jump up and down repeatedly, and it, the whole thing shakes. It's like, whoa, the, the whole stadium shakes. And it's, it's like 100, it's, it's, not, it's close to 100,000 in there, right? Or am I mis yeah. uh, misunderstanding? It's, it's something gigantic. It's, it's crazy. pretty wild, yeah. So that was yeah. really wild. And, and I was with my buddy who was from Chile, and he didn't want to speak Spanish there because he didn't want to be heard. His Spanish, he was worried that there might be, you know, Argentinians that weren't too pleased with Chilenos at that place. Anyway, it was pretty wild. Wow. But I've also been to more family friend games. I've seen, uh, you know, Espanol in uh, Barcelona, and I saw Barca in, in Camp Nou. Uh, and I've seen That's uh, the amazing. impact a few times for sure. How can you times. say you're not a, how can you not say you're a football fan? That you've been to more games yeah. than most Montrealers. <laughs> most I, I do love it. I do. I don't have that, like, that daily you know check out the stats read the news i don't have the time but i wish i did when i was bartending i used to watch premier league a lot uh when i was bartending at mclean's pub uh, back in the day and i uh, won my favorite team you might not like this i brought this out just for you though oh no my favorite team is uh, is a uh, tune army Got my that's fine no, i'm totally fine as long as it's not liverpool i'm totally fine <laughs> so what do you have for us today that you want to show off that means a lot to you so my boyfriend is Italian, so usually I can't uh, I can't wear this T-shirt in front Amazing. of him. <laughs> he won't let you wear it around the house. I love it. But um, cool. the story about this uh, T-shirt, it's um, so in 2016. So you know, with uh, Goal Initiative, you uh, I introduced you to a uh, street football world festival. So this yep. is big uh, soccer community around the world and in 2016 I went to um, to France for the first time at the time I was working at the Quebec Soccer Federation so we have a we had and we still have a partnership with the FFF so I went to Lyon for the street football role as a volunteer and it was at the same time of the Euro so I said why not going to Paris for the final at the end of my trip in wow. Lyon so right. It was amazing because the FFF actually treated me like a princess. So I got there, they, they paid for everything, and then I was really close to get tickets to uh, the final. I couldn't make it, but what they did is that they brought me where they're printing all the official jerseys for the players, and they oh, asked wow. me which one do you want, number, what do you want. So I really personalized the, the, the jersey. So this one wow. for me... Is is really uh, is really special. So yes, especially to do it to do it there with the federation and have them you know uh, treat you so specially like that. That's fantastic, right? Yeah, but friends wow. didn't win, but you know what? It was okay. <laughs> Can you show us uh, a little something on the football side that people don't know either you have or that you love and that you cherish, uh, either a jersey or something uh, uh, soccer related? Yeah. Uh, listen, I had uh, the opportunity to be. Uh, you know, I touch a lot of. I touch a lot of things in the uh, soccer and futsal world here in Quebec. Uh, as, a, as a player, as a coach, uh, yeah. and I had the chance to be uh, the technical director of uh, Shamrocks. Nice. And the Shamrocks is uh, was because uh, the 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 club is not existing anymore. But uh, it was the second the second oldest club in Canada. And the oldest club in uh, in Quebec. Is that right? So, yeah. So I had the chance to be the technical director, and in three years uh, we built a lot of stuff, and we we won the um, the the Quebec Cup with the senior oh. team, the first Triple A team. So uh, so yeah. So th there's a lot of history there in terms. And uh, the the club is in the Montagne, and uh, huh. there's a lot of Irish people in the Montagne. And uh, it was an honor for me to uh, to be a. Uh, they have a really good soccer. Well, football culture there. So yeah. The, uh, and, in the, you know, uh, yeah, in the big soccer culture out there. Huh? That's fantastic. Yeah, the Montagne, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, Irish, uh, Scotland, Scottish people that uh, that are living there. Yeah. And uh, that's why they created the first, um, the first club here in Quebec. Are you uh, able to um, show us something that's very special for you, um, football-wise, a jersey, a keychain, a stuff, that, something that you could show the, the crew that's watching? Yeah, I got a couple things. Let me just pull up to it. Let's see how do I. And uh, uh, Nico, thank you for being here, and Liam too. I love it. So I got a couple things. I mean, yeah. this is the game ball where I scored my uh, my first MLS goal. Well, this was last Dude, year. Dude, that Sometimes... must have been insane too, right? Yeah, it's pretty cool how I have this ball. They 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 kept it for me, and you know I got all the guys to sign it. It's dated somewhere Sick. there. 
Uh, you just yeah, have it lying cool, on your on your on your chair. <laughs> yeah, I kind of want to get like a trophy or something, you know, just to, yeah, get a box, bro. Get yeah, box. I've been looking for one, but I'll, I'll do that eventually. And then on top of that, I have one more thing. It's this nice little Canada medallion that we got with the with the national team. Wow. Um, yeah, so it's something that's really important to me, just because um, I got it at my first camp, and it really, you know, motivated me to to push myself to you know do even better. And you know, after that first camp. Um, that was right before the beginning of last season. And yeah. I really use that as motivation to push me so that for, you know, the next season I could, I could impress myself to, to continue to be with the national team. And, you know, that's what happened uh, last year. So, you know, everything worked out. And for me, that was really, it's really important to me just because playing for, my, for the national team has been, been an honor for sure. How are you maintaining sort of a mental sanity while working at the same time? Uh, well, I think that working keeps that mental sanity. And I've been so lucky that, uh, you know, I do a, a live morning show on the radio uh, in French on Rouge every single morning. And it's funny because I used to do a, a lunch hour show and I kind of got promoted to the to the morning show a few weeks before this whole thing happened, right? I've only, uh, I've been on the morning show only two months and I, I joined a great gang. And, and you know what, like, being on live radio is always fun, but a morning show, you kind of, uh, you, you get the pulse of a city. And so we really got to, to live this, this whole situation from like the, we're getting a bit worried to should we be really worried to this is happening to we're staying home to how are we doing this? And we, I mean, just at the station, we experimented a whole bunch. You know, we did radio from a distance where people were staying at home and I was in a downstairs studio. So finally now we're um, in the lobby of Bell Media. If anyone's ever been into those studios, it's like a huge room where we've held concerts before and we're all there super wide apart we're able to like be in the same room but like you know practice physical distancing because i like to call it yeah, physical yeah. distancing i don't know why they call it social distancing because we've never been as social as we are now yeah i know you're um, totally right it actually is physical distancing that's right and, and so, so but no, now I, you guys do that you guys do the show uh you're you, you are going in every morning correct yeah going yeah. in every going in every morning and uh you know the, the most secure environment and i got my little my lysol wipes and i open doors with lysol wipes and yes. just everything is yeah, but just, you were like that already before bro i will i i'm i'm not that and that ocd of a person to be honest with you like i'm a clean person but yeah. uh but now it's like <laughs> it's above and beyond yeah how are you holding down considering this gigantic uh change in the world for everybody yeah, well, you know, uh, I'm, I'm lucky on a, on a personal level, you know, uh, everyone in my family is safe and uh, confined. Uh, everybody's observing all the rules and even going further in the case of my parents and not even leaving their homes at all, pretty much. Um, I have period. You know, okay. I'm, I'm lucky I've got a government job. I, I have a paycheck that comes through. A lot of people don't right now. And so I'm, I'm mostly worried about uh, the state of where we're going next, you know, and the people that are struggling right now. Uh, yeah. Those are the things that as a, as a, as a politician, you know, uh, something that's on my mind and I was an activist for a long time too so these kind of things yeah. are, are still there for me I hope we come out of this stronger uh, and then we have a better posture for helping each other up yeah well I mean uh, yeah I, I, I would hope so too and again I think um, again there should be hopefully um, more positive than negative and again not putting any uh, sort of light spin or, or taking the seriousness out of what's going on but if you know, community continues to band together as it is and people are taking care of as they are and communicating with each other and people are, are, are talking and checking in on each other and random strangers are looking out for one another. I think if those are the last aspects of society that are in place right now move onwards into the new normal, I think we're going to be extremely fortunate uh, around the world, right? Like, I don't, it's not just a Montreal, I mean, I'm, I'm talking specifically for Montreal. We're lucky in Montreal. In the Sudwest, yeah. I mean, we have some of the most tightly knit communities uh, that you can find in all of the country, I think. Yeah. You know, when it's, it's Burgundy, Henry, uh, Point St. Charles, yeah. you know, Griffintown, Ville Mob, and people are really taking the time to look out for one another looking out for our seniors where we can, looking out for people who uh, don't have other means. There's some amazing initiatives going on in our neighborhoods right now. Yeah, there's a lot of, uh, you know, and a lot of local businesses that are, are either closed or, uh, or are open and doing in some sort of capacity, but are doing more than just, you know, trying to get dollars in. They're actually doing quite a bit uh, to rally and support their, their comrades, you know, the boys and girls mm -hmm. that are sort of around. And I think that's just being... Again, another looking at the glass half full scenario where it's just being like, man, this is, 
you know, I, God, I hope this continues uh, outside of this, you know, post uh, the situation. Yeah, no, there's definitely been some uh, some tragedies in a lot of families and our yeah. seniors have bore the brunt of that. And that's, uh, that's the tragedy. But there, there is that civil lining that people are somehow getting awakened, some of them and, and some people who are already involved in the community. Your business has been really amazing always with the work you've done with goal issues and stuff like that, that it continues and gets even even stronger. So let's hope that's the way things go. How are you handling things on a mental level? What are you doing to keep yourself sane? I mean, obviously, a project like building your website um, is a lot of work, and it, it, you know that's totally amazing. And your roommate actually put the dot com in the comments, so she's obviously a very good friend. But what are <laughs> she you is. doing? What else are you doing uh, to keep sane? Uh, you know, on a mental level, because this is it is hard to to sort of deal with the situation at hand, right? Yeah, but as much as it, it's good at some point, because now everybody is learning how to use like social media, like as much as they can, like different platforms. But yeah. at some point I had to stop, especially reading the news, watching everything that was happening on uh, on the Internet, because it's it, it was kind of depressing. Um, yeah. So at first it was it was part of my routine. Like at eleven, I was watching Justin Trudeau. At no, one, I was then, watching the go. I think everybody go, was yeah. doing the same thing because right. what else we had to do? Now I just decided to stop a bit. And as I said, now I'm trying to um, to walk at least like an hour a day. So this is going to be the first yeah. thing I'm going to do in the morning or at the end of the day. So for example, yesterday I cooked cookies for uh, for my family and I walk there to uh, to drop the cookies. So at least oh, I yeah. just tried to get out of the house yeah as a little bit. I tried. I'm I'm and I'm saying I tried and my boyfriend is right there and he's going to laugh. I'm trying to to train as much as I can. The thing though is that this is something that I like doing with other people. It's hard uh, to do it alone. Um, I know that people are doing it virtually through their phone. For me, yeah. it is so not, um, it's hard. Like I, the, now it's nice, but the contact with someone, this is something that I'm really missing right now. Um, so it I'm helps trying with, to- It helps with the motivation. It helps with the back and forth, right? Yeah, for sure. And the other thing is that I live in a condo and we have a guy downstairs that I'm not going to name, but he's pretty annoying. So every time we're being physically active in the house, either it's uh, the elliptical or just training, uh, he starts banging on the walls. And to be honest, like I'm, I'm just... I'm a really, I, I have like a, such a big tolerance for things, but now I think everybody's getting a bit irritated and I'm really at <laughs> this. You're on, just you're on run. thin ice. It's on thin ice, right? So I don't want to, um, I don't want to, um, I don't want this to happen. So I'm trying to, to train outside when it's, uh, when it's nice. So I would say that being physically active as much as I can is probably, is probably the best for uh, my head. How are you coping on a mental side of things um, in this scenario between your business, uh, personal, like everything? How are you doing mentally in this situation? Well, you know, um, to be honest with you, when we when we 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 we, we heard the news that uh, the Quebec will be on pause, right, or yeah. on break, um, I was pretty, I was pretty pretty sad pretty pretty mad because that weekend uh i had a lot of stuff with uh with futsal so i had uh, a game with my semi pro team and a game with um uh, a young team of young girls and i'm coaching uh it's been three years now and uh, i'm coaching them so uh we had the provincials uh we prepare ourselves for that for that weekend all year yeah um i've been a lot of change in my life lately so i had a lot of uh new opportunity with my with my 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 company with geek yeah and um the thing were, were going pretty well and uh we 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 i'm looking at the press conference and when they when they they, they told us like quebec will be on pause like it, it took me maybe a two or three days to, um, let, it, to let it sink in sort exactly of thing. exactly but after that you know it's this is some stuff that you we don't have control on so um i tried to to keep my mind busy so that's why i'm trying to uh, at, at first I, I tried to um i was always like surprised about you know when we have a trending thing on the on the social network mm -hmm. uh social media so i tried to 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 make something new so yep. i tried the corona compa so people were supposed to like uh film themselves uh 
uh, dancing compa yeah and uh compa is the asian uh music for is asian music and uh i saw it a little bit like the way that things work so i was like really uh uh interesting in that thing yeah uh, so after that uh i try i took the decision to to work on myself to to work on my branding Amazing. so that's the reason why i, I started the uh, comment which is a, a live a little bit like you uh talking with a lot of entrepreneurs from uh everywhere every yeah. uh aspect uh so yeah so i keep my mind busy uh so that's yeah so i'm trying to keep to keep in shape how are you keeping mentally strong uh, in a situation like this uh i mean it hasn't been too bad it's just been about staying focused on the goal and for me that's you know just to make sure i'm staying fit and staying sane you know during this time away from uh football but you know to stay sane i've just been making sure i've been doing workouts and whatnot just to you know stay try to keep my habits the same as they were before just so you know i don't fall out of my routine um just so that when we do get back to playing i'm, I'm ready to go yeah, so that's it. So then that will, I guess, lead me towards um, the sort of the healthier side, the exercise part. So you're doing a lot of, I guess, training uh, either outside or in your house? Yeah, I've been doing a bit of both, you know, going for runs outside and whatnot. Um, the club's been really good. They've given us stationary bikes to work out inside my room. Yeah, I know about that. That's yeah, cool. it's, been, it's been really good. A lot of guys have, have had them and it's been a good way to, you know, stay fit. And on top of that, they've been giving us a bunch of weights and medicine balls and whatever we need. So, you know, I've got my own little little gym in my in my house, which is cool. That's amazing. Do you do you veer off of the program that they sort of your athletic trainers assign you? Do you guys do you sort of mix it up? Do you come up with some own your own routines? Yeah, I think I kind of try to mix it up just because we know our body, you know, we know our body the most. And so I try yeah. to incorporate what they want us to do and also what I think is important. And, you know, it's just about finding that balance of, of what works for me and, you know, making sure I'm ready to go when we when we start up again. Yeah, you. Ex I'm, I'm assuming you're very excited about all, that, all of that and sort of where that might end up going. Uh, yeah. What is something um, that you miss most uh, on a culinary side of life um, that you wish you had sort of been enjoyed a little bit more before all of this had happened? Because, I mean, you guys were actually in basically the start of your of your season. It was really rocking and rolling. Then everybody yeah. just got locked down. And everybody had to go back to their sort of their home base and their nest to sort of encompass. So I know, don't tell me boiled chicken and, and all this healthy crap. Like, I yeah. want to know, is there some sort of treat? Because if you're training and playing all the time, you know, like if you're constantly moving, you can have those, you know, those, those, those treats. Is yeah. there something you're missing most? No, I don't know if there's anything in particular, but I'd just say in general, just being able to go to a nice restaurant, you know, with, with a good vibe and just enjoying the food there, I think. Before this entire situation, we kind of took that for granted and we'd go as if it was nothing, just a normal part of life. And, yeah. you know, now we're isolated, stuck at home, and I have to cook all this food on my own. And I'm not a very good cook, so You're it's not nothing compared to eating at the restaurant. No. Not yet. I'm trying to learn. I'm getting better because of this quarantine, but it's nothing compared to a restaurant and stuff. So, you know, it'd be nice to, to be able to go to a nice restaurant and enjoy a good meal with my friends. If you like what you're seeing, check it out. Check out what we did last week, which is this mashup, and let us know what you think. If you want to get involved, DM us, text us, email us, get in touch. Maybe we can talk the following week as well. I hope you enjoy what you see and let us know. Welcome to Stoppage Time.